Hello everyone, I'd like to spend a little time today to talk about 3D measurement. Specifically, the two types of primary measuring tools we have on the 3D Experience platform. And the first type is what we call basically measuring point-to-point -point measurement tool. And what this does is that this is used to do simple measurements and quickly give us a, a single value. And this is deployed in two of our uh, measuring tools, one being 3D Play and the other being Issue 3D Review. The second tool is geared toward measuring with primitives, and this is a much more accurate tool. It allows you to select exact elements within the uh, structure and get much more precise measurements. It's embedded into 3D Compose, 3D Navigate, and the 3D Markup application. So let's dive right in and take a look at what we can do here. First, I've got a uh, screen set up here with uh, th um, 3D Play and uh, 3D Compose. And if we step into 3D Play, it's a very straightforward interface. We can click two points. They're projected right on the model. And we get a value for a distance. And the units of the value is actually set by the system. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, we can click points directly and project, or we can snap to points on elements. Here I've snapped to two endpoints, and the system reports a single value. And you'll notice I can erase the value, which I can choose to do, or I can just simply restart the command, click another point. And as you can see, I can snap anywhere along this line and this line here or a point and get a fairly quick value for something. But it's a very simple, just a straightforward way to get a single value in, in the system. Now let's compare that, what we can do with the, with the uh, primitive-based uh, measurement tools. So here we'll do a dimension again. I can choose from a choice of how primitives I want to filter by. I'll start with a point input to give me a similar environment to what we saw in uh, 3D Play. And I get a different display right up front. I can validate the value or I can say repeat this input. So I can just keep clicking and get multiple projected point inputs or selected points. I can also switch to one of those other filters as well and quickly get a number of values. Now. Um, I'm just going to refresh because this is not persistent information. And let's compare that to maybe a little more complex uh, selection of information here. This time I'll select two points and we'll get a different number of choices that I can choose from. So here I'll choose uh, to just validate it. And this gives me very much the input we saw when we were working in uh, 3D Play, just a quick input and a quick value. However, if I select a point, let's just select a point here and a second point. And this time we will uh, position this out here somewhere. And I'll choose one of these other alternates. So I'll say repeat chain. By doing this, I can just keep walking from the last dimension forward to the next dimension and quickly expose a bunch of values on the screen, whether I'm capturing them for a screenshot or change action or just for quick information. And I can delete these, as you can see, one by one as opposed to refreshing as well. So, um, just a quick example. Now let's look at this other option we have here, uh, what we call a uh, fan repeat. Now it's similar in that it's a repetitive process, but as you'll see, it lets me pick back from, it's always measuring back from that original datum point, you could say, in the system. It gives me values, you know, anywhere, you know, that I want to measure to. So let's refresh this one more time. All right. So, um, Another, another uh, possible input here. Let's look at this one more time here. And we'll use a different filter. I'm going to select for axis. And you can see now that I'm measuring from a point to an axis. So any point time I want, I can choose a different primitive along that bottom arc and measure a, a distance here from this point right to the center line of that axis, which is a minimum distance. It's measuring a normalized distance to the center line. Now, surfaces are an interesting animal because if I select a surface, and then I go into check that I'm going to get an area of a surface. Now, in this case, if I select an area and I don't validate and I select a second surface, then I'm going to get, once again, a minimum distance between the two primitives, much as we saw in the previous two examples. So let's erase that and move on down through the other choices here. Uh, cylinders are a nice, a, a very powerful tool I use a lot. Here I'm going to select the two cylinders of the hubs of these motors, and the system gives me a normalized distance between the two tangents uh, right here. And, of course, I can use the, the multi-chain uh, and, and chain to maybe another rotor if I want to see all the distances. So the, the user experience is the same regardless of the primitives you're using to work with. All right, let's finish this off one more time here. 
and uh, take another look at uh, this, this other entity, which we call a, a product input. It's a little different because you're looking at the entire uh, uh, volume, so the system reports the volume of space. Once again, you can repeat or stop the command with a validation. If I repeat, then I can just wander around the model and look at volumes of the various components at the product level within the design. Okay. <coughs> So, when we, uh, when we go back to planes, we can also use planes. We have uh, primitives. One of my favorite is primitives, I should say, because I can go out here and just grab a primitive and quickly find a length if, if the geometry is conducive to giving me the information I want. It's probably the one I use the most is just using primitives. Nice thing is it doesn't have to be a straight line. I can look at the length of this curve that forms this surface area here. I can also do like an arc length here on the arc of this uh, hub and get that information reported directly. Now, there's you know, also I can expand on the information. For example, here, if I hit the detail, I get to see the length, the start, the endpoints, direction of the vector, etc. And of course, I can apply some other uh, cosmetic information, um, depending on what you're going to use this screenshot or imagery for. Maybe you're using it to change action or some other, and you want to just highlight a set of information. Hopefully, this was useful to you. Just give you a quick uh, feel of what you can do and how the user experience works with this command. A little subtle, I just thought it'd be good just to touch on it for you. Thank you.